We will get started with Trevor Allen from KSL Sports, followed by Ryan Kostecka with SI.com. Larry, allowing 95 points probably isn't something that, that you're very pleased about, but just being able to, to claw your way into getting a win, uh, how does it feel right now? Well, it feels good. I mean, we gave up 60 points in the second half, so it was uh, it got to be a little bit of an ugly barrage at, at the end. But, you know, shoot, 36 minutes of the game, I thought we were pretty solid. Uh, a lot of offensive rebounds when they missed. They outscrapped us going down the stretch. We missed free throws, had turnovers. It wasn't a good finish, but um, our defense was a lot better than giving up the number of points than than we gave up. It was it was uh, kind of a perfect storm. It d doesn't make you feel great going into it, but this isn't the time of year that you think too much about it. We got to move on for uh, the next ball game against the Trojans. So hopefully we can sharpen some things up prior to that. And then to follow up on that, you guys made 14 threes, shot 53% from beyond the arc. Was a lot of that just of, of what, what the defense was giving you or, or were the guys really feeling it? Well, I mean, a, a little bit of both. I thought in the first half we we had a lot of one pass threes. Uh, you know, I, we led our conference in two point field goal percentage. Uh, we were ninth in the country. If it, you know, free throw percentage, if it weren't for Colorado, we would have led the conference in uh, free throws and twos. And so that doesn't always set up well to come down and cast off a bunch of threes, but we were making them. Guys did hit shots, but I would have liked to have seen us get the ball inside. And, you know, if you can get a, if you can get a one pass three early in a possession, my guess is you can get one late, but that was kind of the nature of the game, a little bit up tempo. Our guys shared the basketball and, and I, this is the time of year when you want to be knocking down shots. I was, uh, I was proud of it to have six people in double figures is, is a little bit unusual in a college game, but, um, you know, this is the time when guys need to be using up their rounds of ammunition and, and making them. Next question will come from Ryan Costeca, followed by Josh Newman with the Salt Lake Tribune. Hey coach, typically you have, you know, three to four weeks before you play in a phone again, as far as back 12 goes. You're playing the UFC, you know, a week and a later. Does that bode well, you know, better for you or for them? I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was a little choppy of a question that was uh, a little bad reception. Would you mind repeating that, please? Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead and ask someone else then. Go ahead and go next. All right. We'll move on to Josh Newman, followed by Jay Drew with the Deseret News. Larry, the big run there in the first half when you guys broke it open. Um, were you happy with you know the you know the aggression from your team and, and the willingness to go up and down and may, and maybe you know kind of make Washington get uncomfortable, not able to get into their two three zone like they'd like? Well, they they've changed the philosophy a little bit. It it started in a two three zone until about the first or second pass, and then they were going man. Um, so, you know, the guys found a, a pretty decent rhythm. I just, the, the uh, Achilles heel for us tonight, I thought was some sloppy turnovers, some pet uh, catching and passing, uh, you know, simple plays, whether they were at the end or even early in the game. But uh, offensively, we were pretty darn efficient if we didn't turn the thing over and if we moved it multiple times. Um, but yeah, we, our guys were aggressive, as I said, and guys were feeling it a little bit. We shared it decently and, um, you know, we, we need, we need, obviously when you give up 60 points in the second half, we needed all those buckets, but, but we, you know, we're about to play USC, which is one of the top teams, not only in our conference, but in the country at defending the two point line and the three point line. And you're just, there's not as much margin for error. We're going to have to be a lot more crisp and, uh, and do a better job of, of moving the ball and certainly with their shot blocking ability inside um, it's It's going to pose a little different challenge, but tonight I thought it was great. I, I love the, the offense for 90% of the ball game. Just a quick follow-up when you're in a situation like this tournament time where, you know, you play again tomorrow night, there's no practice time. You know, how do you go about trying to fix things that you thought went wrong uh, on such a short turnaround? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mentioned that in our post game meeting, you know, we, uh, we aren't going to be able to fix turnovers. I think a lot of it's a mindset that you bring in. And, you know, the, the classic saying of uh, mental is the physical as four is the one. 
this is not a time of year that we're going to improve our skill level. We're not going to improve our shooting touch. We're not going to get any bigger in the weight room. You know, a lot of those physical things just aren't happening. And teams that advance right now become a little bit stronger mentally. And, and hopefully this was a little bit of a wake-up call, a, a correction to be able to win a game, but yet not be very sharp going down the stretch. Um, you know, so we've, we, we, I think we're, we're pleased with where we were here, but obviously moving forward, um, we got to sharpen the saw a little bit without a lot of practice time. I, I think, uh, gentlemen from SI, one of the questions was the fact that we played USC. I just heard the USC a couple of weeks ago that, you know, it's in it. It's not an advantage for either team, but there's not a whole lot that's changed. So the scout and the prep turning right around is better than maybe if, you know, it's an opponent that we hadn't played in a long time that could be doing things differently. I think we know what we're going to get from USC. So um, there's a benefit to that. Next question will come from Jay Drew, followed by Josh Furlong and Sam Gordon. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Larry, the, you mentioned the sloppy turnovers. There were a couple calls in the turn in the first half where they were calling, traveling on uh, on that step back that we've seen Alfonso do all year. Uh, did you get an explanation for that, or was he really traveling? I guess would be my question. Well, I, I'm, that's not really part of my job description. I felt like on the first one it was an obvious travel, and on the second one, in my discussions with the referees, a little bit of an interpretation. I thought he was uh, it was a pullback dribble on the second one. He hadn't picked the ball up, and I, you know, in my discussions with the uh, with the officials, they could see that point. And some of those plays are hard to call bang, bang when they're live. Fonz has got to clean it up a little bit. It's uh, it's it's a it's an unusual move, and he's got to make sure that he's crisper and defines his pivot foot and also the point at which he picks picks the ball up for the step back. You can't pick the ball up and then take a two step back. If you're in the middle of a pullback dribble, when you do the step back, then it becomes legal. And I think, uh, you know, without seeing the film, I, I felt like the first one was obviously a travel. The second one, I wasn't so sure. And just what benefits are there to having played the game, having gotten used to the arena, gotten used to the unusual atmosphere? Well, you never know about that. You know, it's gone both ways. Um, we've been on both ends of it. I think it's going to be what I like the fact that we played, um, you know, got our feet wet a little bit. It had been a long time since Washington had played a game that I think they, they were close to two weeks off without playing. So, uh, as far as tomorrow goes, it's hard to say, I think, you know, you were looking at a USC team that's, uh, coach of the year, player of the year, defensive player of the year, all kinds of stuff. So I don't know if it's going to make much difference in their mind, uh, them not playing, and they played recently against UCLA. So I, I'm just happy to be playing right now, and I guess that will be a, uh, a question that you guys would have some interpretation of after you watch the game tomorrow and see if a team looks rusty. Uh, I wouldn't guess that we're going to look tired. So I, I'm just, again, I'm just happy to be advancing and, and playing. Next question will come from Josh Furlong, followed by Sam Gordon and Josh Newman. Yeah, Larry, T-Mobile Arena hasn't been too kind to you in conference play. Ever since you guys moved there, you haven't won a game until tonight. But is it nice to kind of get that, that monkey, so to speak, off your back? I know you don't generally care about those types of streaks or whatever that are, but, but is it nice to kind of finally get that win just to, just to kind of shake it off and say that you can do it? Yeah, I, I, most definitely. You know, this is not a time of year that you want to be in a in a one and done situation. And uh, I thought there was a little, you know, we got a, a, a couple of years that we got to buy. And we ran into the hottest team in the league in Oregon that got on a string. And, um, you know, look, you can always come up with uh, with storylines. But the one year I think we beat California by 30 points and then you end up playing them in the first round of the tournament and sometimes human nature comes into play but it it hasn't felt good we did get a win against Kentucky here so it's not a building jinx it's more of a Pac-12 conference jinx and uh 
So we certainly would like to get a little, you know, feel better about it and be able to, uh, to get some wins. So there's no doubt. I didn't think about it until you just mentioned it and, uh, and discuss that, but yes, certainly. And then following up real quick on that or not on that necessarily, but last year, obviously COVID, uh, kind of hit right as you guys were playing the game, everything was being canceled as you were playing and you guys found out pretty much that the world was shutting down after that game. What, what was it like to kind of come back to this environment, knowing the full year that we've had, uh, just, just having that as the context, especially with no fans in the stands. Yeah. It's still a little bit eerie, you know, the, the, uh, the casino is fairly dead. A lot of restaurants dead, although things are opened up here. Once we get closer to the weekend, it was more of a Monday, Tuesday, shut down but I you know it, it was a year ago and a lot of times when you get as old as I am uh years fly by you know it's like wow that was a fast year between birthdays and different things and this was one of those occasions I've said it before that if this was a year since we were here last it seemed like it could be dog years to the point where it was like seven years it seems like so much has transpired We've had a lot of adversity, ups and downs. We've had stuff going on with our family personally and and different things that have just made it. It's definitely not one of those cases where he said, man, this year flew by. Um, so I think there's some optimism. We got daylight savings coming up this week. Uh, we've got needles that are going in people's bodies. The days are getting longer. I think all of the, the medical profession and everybody's got a handle on things. And it's like my physician, my knee, knee doctor told me years ago when I suffered a, a lot of injuries, if it doesn't kill you, it's just going to make you stronger. And I think uh, our program and our players have gone through an awful lot, but this is going to be one of those things I think that makes us all more resilient. I'm thankful that we have a chance to play. There's some conferences that aren't playing. There's some teams that aren't playing. So to keep it in perspective, I feel like we're fortunate to be able to keep playing this game, but it certainly has been a challenging year. Next question will come from Sam Gordon with the final question coming from Josh Newman. Coach, uh, Timmy, with his third double-double of the season, uh, just when he's impacting the game in multiple phases like that, what kind of effect does that have on, on, on your team? Yeah, I think yeah, I think Timmy's really grown. He was uh, I think he was the only player in the top 10 in points, rebounds and assists in our conference, uh, you know, and has had a couple recent games where he's been close to double digits in assists. He's playing under control, doing a nice job finding some guys. And that's really helping our offensive efficiency. And it's all about winning. In his mind, he was he was very physical. I thought on the glass tonight we got out rebounded. Um, so we need a, be a better performance moving forward, but he's, he's been, you know, doing a terrific job, uh, in all areas, not just on the basketball court, but one of the things that we have to keep in mind during this time is that these kids are students as well. And here's a young guy, uh, with a lot of online classes and different things, all of the academic reports I'm getting on him are A's and B's. And as I told our team the other day, uh, you know, how you do some things are usually an indication of how you do everything. And so he's, his habits are dialed in on and off the court. It's leading to some good performances on the court. Uh, and I haven't been around anybody that's, that's as dialed into a game plan and desire and wanting to win as, as I have with Timmy. So I'm proud of him for his all conference accolades and we're going to need to saddle him up and keep riding him to a certain extent in order to uh, have a chance to win some games. All right, final question will come from Josh Newman. Did we ever have the tech, the, the glitch question figured out? We're good. Yeah. He said you answered it. So we're all set there. Josh, if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah. Sorry. My audio died there. Um, Larry in, in two games against USC, you guys have defended Evan Mobley well, both times. Um, what do you think has worked there in those two games and maybe what adjustments might you expect them to make on it for him? If any. Well, I'd have to kill you if I gave you our secret sauce. Uh, you know, I, I think it's crazy to think that you're going to shut him down much. It's, it's just important to try to impose your will a little bit, be as physical as you can. Uh, but he's a load, you know, I had evidence by the accolades and, and what he's done, what he's meant for their team. I don't know what they have in store. I know in the UCLA game, uh, most recently, they were really adamant 
and focused on getting the ball inside. They pounded the ball inside and uh, they've done, tried to do that against us, but it was, it was pretty obvious that that's, uh, you know, where they're hanging their hat and they're getting a lot of great play from the, the backcourt and perimeter as well. So it's a, it's a multifaceted team, but we've got to keep our fingers crossed that we keep, that we have answers for, uh, for old number four. I think it's number four. Yeah. Young number four. <laughs>